I'm going to read just verses 12 and 13 of Luke chapter 6. When you're there and you're ready, say, I'm there and ready. Let's read it aloud. Join with your pastor. Now it came to pass in those days that he, Jesus, went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself and from them he chose 12 whom he also named apostles. You can be seated, beloved, in the presence of an awesome God. For um, the last several months, Deacon Mack, I have um, at various intervals been working my way, Mike, through a devotional that is based on the made for TV series on the life of Jesus entitled The Chosen. And um, I have been throughout the, probably since August working my way in intervals, sometimes stopping uh, Gene to use another devotional, sometimes uh, interrupting it to work on a book of the Bible, but I've been picking this back up from time to time, this book. It's actually in two parts, so I did part one, and uh, then I put it down, put it aside, gave myself a break, John, and a few weeks ago I picked up part two. And I've been working and weaving and making my way through it. Uh, if you've ever seen this made-for-television series called The Chosen, you know that it deals in general with the life of our Lord, but with more, how shall I say it, with more specificity uh, and particularity. It deals with the 12 men that our Lord chose. And uh, one of the things, Lee, that has um, struck me, has captivated me, as I have read again uh, how our Lord, during his earthly ministry, chose uh, these men. Put a pin there. I'm going to come back to that. I, I have been... Uh, as Muhammad Ali used to say right before a fight, uh, particularly when he was fighting Joe Frazier, he said, this may shock and amaze you, but I'm going to beat Joe Frazier. <laughs> he also said, you ought to float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, but that's not my sermon for the day. But, but I have been, in the words of the late Muhammad Ali, I've been shocked and amazed. Uh, I don't know why, because I know it, but sometimes you, uh, you have yourself reminded of what you already know. I, I've been shocked and amazed at the men our Lord chose. Uh, as, I, if I, as I've worked my way through this and weaved my way through it and, and read my way through it and prayed my way through it, I have been, okay, I'm going to tell the truth. I've been stupefied by the men our Lord chose. Uh, when you look at them, uh, none of them would have been chosen by any Fortune 500 company to do anything. Uh, none of them would have been chosen. Well, I was about to say none of them would have been chosen by Facebook or Twitter. Now it's called Meta. But based on some of the stuff on them platforms, ain't no telling who they choose. These men would, would not have been chosen uh, by many of the ranking and influential and significant corporations and companies of our country or our world. I have been 
dumbfounded by the men our Lord chose. Now, now let me say this, and, and Tracy, and I'm going to move on from it. Um, you know, we say, we say that um, he chose these 12 to be his disciples. But if you read the passage, are y'all still awake? If, if you read the passage Pastor Kelly read, it t Luke tells us uh, in his analytical, methodical way that these men were already disciples. They were already. They, okay, you don't believe me, so I got to prove everything to y'all after 40 years. Here it is. Now it came to pass, verse 12, in those days he, Jesus, went out to the mountain to pray, continued all night in prayer. I want to, can I put a pin right there? And can I park there and parenthetically say to you, <laughs> before every major decision of your life, you ought to bathe it in prayer. <laughs> Angie, DP, y'all ain't going to help me. Before every major decision in your life, you ought not be so quick and so flippant and so casual and so fast to jump to a decision. If you're a believer, you ought to bathe every decision in your life in prayer and consultation with God. And, and Pastor Kelly, since you're helping me, I'll go further. Especially any relationship you're going to get in. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. Talk back to me. No, no, you are not hooked up with anybody. In business, in romance, in carpooling. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Aaron, Reverend Nan, you ought not hook up with nobody you're going to spend a long time with without taking that person and dragging their name to God and saying, Father, what you think about this one? And if the Lord, if the Lord turns thumbs down, you better run, Forrest, run. <laughs> I mean, one time, I don't think he'll mind me telling it. If he does, he'll sure tell me if he hear it. I was having uh, lunch with Bishop Jakes advocating for a preacher. You know, I'm always advocating for somebody. You know, you ought to do this, and you ought, and you know, I'm always advocating for somebody. And Bishop Jakes looked at me, he said, let me tell you something. He said, when I put somebody down, don't you pick them up. <laughs> he said, because by the time I put them down, Ain't nothing to them. <laughs> if God turns thumbs down on them, don't you turn thumbs up. Our Lord, everybody say, spent all night in prayer. Keep going. When it was day, verse 13 now, he called, Jesus called, here it is, his disciples. Am I in the book? Come on, deacons, am I in the book? He called to himself his disciples. And from his disciples, he chose 12 that he then named apostles. Come on, I'm in the book. I'm so right, I can't be wrong. No, a disciple is a student, a learner, a follower. And our Lord had no doubt hundreds of disciples. God, I feel like preaching this. Hundreds of followers. We know he had 70 beyond the 12 and probably hundreds. And, 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 and Mike and Lee, since I'm already digging a hole for myself, y'all don't think I can get out of. And probably, no, not probably, certainly, in that number were women. Don't come for me unless I send for you. 
certainly in that number of the hundreds were women. We know that because women's names are constantly listed in the four gospels as those who followed him, ministered to him out of their resources. And y'all do know on resurrection morning when a man could not be found, it was the women. Somebody holler women. It was the women that went to the tomb from his disciples. Let the whole church in the room say disciples. Let the whole church online type in disciples. From his disciples, Tanya, our Lord chose 12. And he calls them apostles. Now, what strikes me Pop is what a motley crew. <laughs> the thing is now, these, these are, oh well, they just motley. <laughs> but really, deacons, that should not surprise me and it shouldn't surprise you because this is not um, how shall I say it? This, this is not a New Testament phenomenon. Uh, this, this is a habit the divine seems to have in the Old Testament. Y'all ain't helping me. Picking these unlikely folk. Uh, I, I, I average Joe like Noah who, because he finds favor in the eyes of God, I wish I could preach that, in, in a corrupt world, in a corrupt time, Noah finds favor. Okay, okay, I think somebody kidnapped my members and brought in duplicates, because if I had said favor to my church, y'all would be hollering and screaming. Noah found favor. In the, okay, here it is, Angie. Somebody in here today knows, somebody online knows that the only reason you are where you are, have what you have, is because of God's, I double dog dare you, holler favor. All you have and all I have is by the grace and favor of God. Just an average Joe named Noah. And yet God used him to build the ark um, and to start the world over again. Then, then you got this murderer and fugitive from justice by the name of Moses. And then you got a, a lady with a shady past and a questionable character by the name of Rahab. I wish I had a church. Then you got a boy named Joseph who doesn't know how to keep his dreams to himself. You got a girl named Hadassah who's going to change her name to Esther. Y'all ain't going to help me. And becomes a, a, a unwilling, a complicit person in, 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 in the diabolical scheme of a lust-filled king. And, and, and I would tell you more, but you can't take it. The list goes on and on. And it isn't just Hadassah and Joseph and Mo and Noah and Rahab, it's you. And it's me. Come on, no, no wonder Paul wrote the church at Corinth. You see your calling, brethren. Not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise has God chosen, but God has chosen the weak, the base, the despised, the things that are not to bring to shame, the things that are. Why? So that no flesh should glory in his presence. That's what Paul wrote to the church. It could have been written in the Old Testament and it could have been written about you and I. Our calling, our being chosen has nothing to do with us but everything to do with the grace of God. And I'm going to say this, Deacon Liz, if I got to run out my own pulpit. And that grace 
Reverend Connie ought to be reason enough to give him praise. Okay, okay, okay. No, I'm going to, I'm going to try one more, one more. That grace bestowed on you copiously and abundantly ought to be enough reason whenever you think about it to break out in a praise. When, when you think of what could have happened to you and what should have happened to you were not it for the grace of God. Every one of us online, every one of us in this room ought to take about 15 seconds and don't thank him for your car. Don't thank him for your clothes. Don't don't thank him for your crib or your cash. Just take 15 seconds. Don't thank him for your sorority or your fraternity. Don't thank him for your 401k. Don't thank him for your retirement. But take 15 seconds and just thank him for his grace. Huh. Grace is a reason to praise him. If he doesn't do anything else, grace is enough. God still uses ordinary people. He still calls unlikely folk. And we thank him for it. And that's, beloved, what I believe we see in the text today. And, 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 and John, while this, while this passage, Bill, is not exciting or exhilarating, I almost felt bad. I almost felt bad, uh, faithful follower. I almost felt bad uh, giving it to Pastor Kelly to, to, put, it, to put on, on, on the screen. Because I thought, that is so dull. In fact, I kind of flirted with the idea of just adding some extra verses so y'all would have more to read. I thought, that's 12 to 16, just a list of names. That's all it is. Just, just look at it. Start verse 14. Simon, he named him Peter, Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon called the zealot, Judas, the brother of James, and then you got that, that traitor. Rounding out the number. There's nothing exciting, nothing exhilarating about this passage. It doesn't um, do anything to excite us, but it does shine light on the ways of God and how God deals with us. Just, somebody say, just the names. And, and so as I read and reread this passage, I asked myself, but chairman, but vice chairman, uh, what's in here to preach? What, what's in here to talk about? And here's my thesis. Are you ready for my thesis? My thesis is Jesus shows he is the savior of the world. I'm reading my thesis. Okay, let me try it again because y'all y'all are not listening to my thesis. My thesis is Jesus shows he is the savior of the world, a Jesus for everyone, which we saw last week is Luke's reason for writing this gospel when he chooses these 12 to be his apostles. Into my thesis. Did y'all get it? My thesis is... Jesus shows he's the savior of the world. Well, I told you last week, that's why Luke writes. Matthew writes to show Jesus is the subject of scripture. And Mark writes to show Jesus is the suffering servant. Luke writes to show Jesus is the savior of the world. And one of the ways he shows he's the savior of the world, by these 12 men that he chose. And I'm going to show it to you right now. Here it is. Let, let's walk through it. You ready? You ready? Because here was my question of the text. Why did you choose these 12 men? Now, remember, Bill, he ain't hard up for people. He got followers. He, he prays all night. But Ted, he prays all night. And he then calls all of his disciples. And after praying all night long, this is the best he can come up with. <laughs> So like when God told Gideon, you got too many, 
and kept winnowing it down and winnowing it down until it was an impossible number to get anything done. He prays all night, Elder Kathy Lockhart, and at the next morning he calls all, everybody say all, all the disciples to him, and he picks these 12 to become the apostles, upon whom he is going to build the New Testament church. And I just want to ask him when I see him, why? Of all the people you called together that day, like Steve Jobs or Tim Cook um, or Jeff Bezos, uh, call it all the employees of Amazon or Apple together, and then out of all them employees, Pick 12, and these are the 12 they pick. Why them? It's because Jesus wants to show us he's the savior of the whole world, and he's a Jesus for everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, God, Lee, I feel like preaching this. Are you ready? Here it is. Write this down. First point, I got 25 minutes. First point. These men have all lived different lives. That's my first point. I believe the reason lead Jesus chose out of all, everybody say all. All, I said everybody say all. All the disciples he had, he picks these 12. And I think, Helen, one reason he picked those 12 is because those 12 had all lived different lives. Among them, Deacon Gary Croft, were fishermen, tax collectors, zealots, and other professions. I feel like preaching that. They are different in so many ways. Everybody say different. I want to give you three ways they're different. A, they all hail from different backgrounds. Oh God, y'all making me work hard. B, they all hold different beliefs. And C, they all have different behavior based on their beliefs and their background. God, I'm preaching real good, but y'all don't know it. They are, they've all lived different lives. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. That's good news because it means that he might walk through here today and pick some of y'all because he likes choosing folk who come from different backgrounds. Okay, okay, y'all gonna play me, right? But y'all forgot I know you. Y'all forgot I've been with you 40 years. You know I know you. I know you bougie now. Leland, I know they bougie now. But I remember the Sunday you jined here. Look how quiet y'all got. Some of y'all were here when I got here. I knew you when. Why y'all getting quiet? I know you didn't come from the suburbs. You from Bolivar Arms. Y'all ain't going to help me. Come on, you from Mount Vernon Avenue. You from Main Street. And if you wasn't born there, you spent a lot of time there. <laughs> Somebody tell them, move on, move on, move on. Here's the good news, DP. Some of y'all from the east side and the west side, the hilltop. After it was the hilltop. Some of y'all got cousins who are Hill Williams and some of y'all got cousins who are Hill Billies. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Down in the hollers of West Virginia, talk to me. All of us come from different backgrounds, deep in the south, out west, out east, the north, various parts of this country. Some of us come from broken families. Others of us come from blended families. But aren't you glad today that in spite of our background and the difference, one thing we have in common, the blood of Jesus Christ. 
God, I feel like preaching up in here. Would you tap a neighbor, say, neighbor, I've come from different places. I don't have what other folk in first church have. I don't, I didn't get what folk at first church got. I may not be in the pedigree number of the highfalutin and the sophisticated, but I sure thank God that one day I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. I heard him and I came to Jesus just like I was weary, worn, and sad, but I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad. Somebody holler, thank you for the blood. They lived different lives. And that's why I love First Church. Because, Mom Edwards, we are an amalgamon. We are a combination of all kind of folk. You'd be surprised. But some of these folks sitting up here looking so good today have been through. And where they came from. What they had to fight their way out of. Climb their way up out of. Scrap their way. See, y'all getting quiet. I need some honest folk who are not ashamed to say, if you knew my story, you might start to understand my praise. These men were chosen because they had lived different lives. And I wouldn't pastor a church that was homogeneous. I wouldn't do it. I, I, would, I would pack up my books. All I got here is books. I'd pack up my books and I would grab a few robes, ones that still fit. And I'd get up out of here if I ever showed up one Sunday and this was a homogenized church, homogeneous, all uppity folk, all sedity folk. Y'all getting quiet. I, I, I need some Aunt James in here. <laughs> Y'all getting quiet. I, I need some folk from the other side of the tracks. Why you see y'all quiet? Y'all quiet. I, I don't want to pastor just a middle class church. I don't want to just pastor an uppity church. I don't want to just pastor a well connected, well healed church. I want a church of whosoever will. I want a church that's made up of examples of the grace of God to reach down in the muck and the mire and save anybody. Yeah. Yeah. My Mary, these, these 12 men, I, I asked the text, why, why them? And I think the answer I got, Pop, was because they have lived different lives. The, the second thing I think reason Jesus chose these 12 is because these men all looked at life differently. There's nothing worse than being in a room where everybody see everything the same way. Now, some of y'all like that because you want everybody to co-sign everything you say and sing how great thou art to you. <laughs> but but you, you, you need somebody in your life who looks at you and says, that is the dumbest thing I ever heard in all the living of my life. Now that's just plumb dumb. <laughs> and one time, Uncle George, Deacon Mary, I, I was doing something and my late friend and brother, Dr. Charles Booth, looked at me, he said, what is wrong with you? I said, nothing wrong with me. He said, you are not serious about doing that. I said, yes. You know how you get, yes. <laughs> He said, you are too smart. That is stupid. 
now, now. <laughs> He's dead, so I can tell this story. I, I, I felt something right here, getting right up in here to tell him what I thought of him. <laughs> Since he called my idea stupid, it got right here. And about time it got right in my larynx where it would have come up and out. The Holy Ghost said, you know he's right. <laughs> it is stupid. <laughs> you need people in your life who love you enough to say, that is the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. Deacon Sylvia, I think Jesus chose these men, these 12, out of all the ones he could have chosen, because he wanted to say he show he was the savior of everyone, a Jesus for all people. And he picked men who all looked at life differently. C can I prove it? Let me show you real quick. Uh, you, got, you got John. You have John. We'll, we'll get to John. We're in Look now, next month, we'll look at John in December. I'm going to look at John. And John, oh, bless his little heart. <laughs> bless his little heart. John, John, John's the kind of kid in school you want to beat up. Because he's the teacher's pet. Every time you see John, he leaning on Jesus' shoulder. <laughs> you just want to punch John. Because he's always just gazing up at Jesus and loving on Jesus. And, and the Bible says, and he is, is the disciple Jesus loved the best. Now, you don't like nobody who is the favorite. Y'all so deep. So you got John. Then you got Peter, who carries a switchblade. He is everything John is not. John is nice and kind and sweet. Peter will cut you and cuss you. <laughs> and think nothing of either one of them. You got Thomas, who's always raising questions because he ain't sure. And you've got Simon, who's called the Zealot. And do you know what the zealots were? The zealots were a religious, political organization that went around killing folk. Killing Romans for how they treated Jews and killing Jews they thought were in bed with the Romans. I mean, this is a weird group of guys. I'm surprised they didn't kill each other. But you know they had a fight, right? Who's going to be the greatest? They all look at life differently. Let me tell you why. Because all of them have had different exposure. Tracy, different experiences and different examples. And all of those things determine how you look at life. Oh, I want to preach, but I'm afraid y'all can't take it. When you've been hurt, Jesus, by life, by people, you look at life differently. If you've been abandoned early in life, had your heart broken, I don't care how saved you are. You look at life differently. If you've been the subject of abuse and mistreatment, even when he saves you, you look at people differently. You are suspect. You are unsure. You are, oh God, can I preach to my people today? You don't get through life with exposure, experiences, and examples, and it not determine how you look at life. Simon the Zealot, looked at life through the lens of an angry man who hated the Romans. Peter looks at life as a man with a temper 
who feels life has done him wrong. John looks at life through the lens of a sensitive, poetic heart. Everybody looks at life differently. Kenny, all of us in this room, if truth be told, look at life differently. It's based on what you've been through. God help me today. Would, would, would you just tell a neighbor, don't judge me. Don't, don't judge me. Don't be so quick to criticize me. Don't be so quick to dog me and talk about me until you hear my story and know what I've been through and know where I've come from and know what I had to face and fight to get to where I am. It's why I act the way I act. It's because it's how I look at life. If, if we could understand, I got to go. If we could understand that, we would be more patient and compassionate when we realize everybody we meet is going through something. God help me. God help me. God, would you save me? Everybody I meet is going through something. Carrying some burden. Some of them, I move, I have 10 minutes, Smitty, some of them live perpetually on the brink of tears. I, I told you, did I not? I did. Of the first Valentine's Day after D passed. D died in January, Valentine's Day is February. I went to Walmart, ran uh, that morning after dropping the kids off to get Valentine's cards um, for First Lady. And my habit was I always got D and Joss cards and candy. So I'm in Walmart in Canal and it hits me like a thunderbolt. I only got to buy one. <laughs> now I'm going to be honest. I stood there and I got to one. I got to one and, and I, I, I was walking and then I prayed. I said, Lord, don't let anybody stop me. I said, because if anybody stops me between this register and my car, I'm going off on them. And I never go to Walmart without a half a dozen people wanting counseling. <laughs> and I said to God, Father, please don't let anyone stop me because I'm this close to going over the edge. There are people in this room and online, you this close to going over the edge. Shh. Tap a neighbor, say, don't push me, don't push me. Because if you push me, I promise I'm going over the edge. I came today and I didn't want to, but I'm trying to do this thing right. And I told the Lord, leave me alone, I'll watch online maybe. But the Lord told me to come here. And I'm trying to get through this. And I don't need you to say nothing silly to me right now. I don't need you to talk about what somebody got on. I don't need you to crack no stale jokes. Y'all getting quiet. I don't need you to ask me where I got my shoes from. I'm trying not to lose it. God, I wish I had a real church here. I'm trying not to go ballistic. I'm trying to stay saved. But life has been no crystal stair. And I'm about to go over the edge. So if you can do anything, pray for me. And ask the Lord to help me make it one more day.
I believe, Liz, I believe, Liz, while you're working your way through your mom's death, I believe he picks folk because we all look at life different. And hey, Liz, hey, De I'm sorry, Deacon Elizabeth Gaddis, and ain't it strange how the day you look at life different than you did before your mother died? Oh, you so deep now. You got an answer for everything. Let life happen to you. Come on, you, 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 you lose somebody you love and then come talk to us. They all looked at life differently. Simon the Zealot, Judas the Betrayer, John the Lover, Peter the cusser and the cutter. All of them look at life based on their experiences, their exposure, their examples, and so do you. Flash, news flash, but he still chose you. Here's three, I have five minutes, 30 seconds. These men, not only live different lives, they not only all look at life differently, but Deacon Rosie Dowdy, these men are all at different levels in their lives. Deacon Croft, they're at different ages. They're at different levels in their faith walk. They're at different levels emotionally in their maturity, their maturation. None of them are the same. They're all at different levels. Um, and I'm going to say this, and I hope y'all won't get mad. People in this church are at different levels. Amen, amen, amen. You know, so what some of the senior saints can take, new saints can. Now, now, now them, them folk on that front row right there, all of them, all of them, all of them. All of them. Now, I expect them to take more. Because they deacons, they've been, they, listen, they've been walking with the Lord a long time. But then somebody got saved last week. We got to be a little more patient with them. Oh, y'all so quiet on me. No, 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 no. But John Boyce, Deacon Boyce, listen, people are at different levels in their life, in their age, in their maturity, in their faith, in their understanding. And yet, Smitty, Jesus chose these men who lived different lives and looked at life differently and who were at different levels because he wanted to show he was a Jesus for everybody. Now, here's what I'm going to show you. I'm closing my book. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. They were at different levels. Everybody say levels. But A tells me whatever level they were at, they were in process. Oh, Jesus. I thought y'all were shot. I'm so disappointed because in my study, I said, when I say that, they're going to shout. Let me try it again. They were at different levels, but all of them were in process. Would you tell a neighbor, say, I'm in process. Say, back up off me. Leave me alone. I'm in process. I am better than I was yesterday. Come on, I'm better than I was last week. I'm better than I was last year. Somebody holler, in process, in process. Please be patient with me. because I feel like preaching right there. Because God is not finished with me yet. Tap a neighbor, say, I'm in process. But not only are they all in process, they're all making progress. And I wonder, do I have anybody up in here, Sister Smith, who can look back over your life? Here we are, the 11th month of the year. We almost at the end of the year. 2022 almost over. Can you look at any point and place in 2022 where you can say, I made progress. I may not be as deep as you are. I may not be as spiritual as you are. I may not be as wonderful 
as you think you are, but I'm making progress. I may not have reached where you are, but I'm making progress. I, in fact, I'm doing so good, I ain't cussed nobody out since January. Y'all ain't helping me. I'm doing so good. I haven't had a, a bit of weed. I haven't smoked a reefer in the last 90 days. Come on, I ain't been in bed with nobody other than myself for the last 60 days. Somebody holler, I'm making progress. Boy, look how quiet y'all get. I need somebody just to jump up like popcorn and thank God for your progress. You're not perfect, but you're making progress. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Y'all don't know old song. Plant my feet up on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise, fear dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up. This is the national anthem of every saint in process and every saint in progress. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. Higher plane than I have found. Plant my feet. Somebody holler higher, higher ground. Tap a neighbor, say neighbor, back up off me. I'm in process. He's still perfecting me. He's still working on me. He's still shaping me and molding me. But I'm making progress because I'm not where I was and I'm not where I'm going to be. But I'm pressing for the mark of the prize of the high calling. I feel like preaching. Tap a neighbor, say neighbor. I'm in process, I'm making progress because he's preparing me for what he has for me. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into your mind what the Father has prepared, not in heaven, not later on, not by and by, but right here, right now, can I go to my seat when I tell you he's got something bigger and better for you right now. He's got a better job. He's got a better house. He's got a better car. He's got a better life. I double dog dare you holler better. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Your mind hasn't comprehended what God, I feel like preaching, has for you. Would you look at a neighbor, say, I wish I could shake your hand. I'd shake you and rock you. I'd rock you and shake you. But let me just tell you, stay in process. Keep making progress. He's preparing you for what he has for you. And God has something, a miracle, a breakthrough, a healing, a deliverance with your name on it. Somebody holler, he's preparing me just like that little lad who gave Jesus all he had. How the multitude were fed with the fish and the loaves of bread. What you have may not be much, but if you yielded to the touch of the master's loving hand, then you'll understand that your life can never be the same. Just ordinary people. God uses plain old ordinary people somebody holler I know he does because he picked me up turned me around placed my feet on solid ground he uses
how to go. But I heard them old folks singing, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about how he set me free. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I wonder, is there anybody here who can look back over your life and just give God a quick praise for what he's done for you, where he brought you from, how he chose you in spite of yourself. He chose me out of all he could have chosen. He can use me. Oh, no, he's all right. Yeah, I know he's all right. Yeah! Oh, I know he's all right. Somebody just holler, he chose me. Out of all he could have chosen, out of all he could have used, he chose me. And he can use me until he uses me up. Because I'm glad he chose me. I asked the text the other week, why? <laughs> if you spent all night in prayer, called all of your disciples together, and these are the 12 you picked, I have one question, Mr. Jesus. Why? <laughs> why these 12? And I believe the answer is because they all had lived different lives. They all looked at life differently. And they all were at different levels. And I just wanted you to know when you preach the second Sunday in November 9th, 2022, I want you to be able to tell the saints without fear of successful contradiction, he can use anybody. <laughs> and you don't have, Tracy, and you don't have to qualify it. Because if you can use that motley crew, my God, what could he do with you? Now, if he could use that band of brothers, what could he do with you?